next house, Brimall Court. If you haven't heard of this house, where have you been? This is one of our favourite houses. They're very exciting, very energetic and young. Uh, the founder, Alexandra Corneau, um, actually bought this house in 2008 and established this from a basically a dying brand in the 1950s uh, and resurrected it to what it is today. Um, the wines are all fabulous. Uh, they've mm. been made by the very exciting, very excellent winemaker uh, team at Ure Ferrer. Mm. And uh, they source um, across many different top vineyards in the Grand uh, Montagne de Reims and also in the Côte de Blanc. The breakdown of this is 80% Pinot Noir with 20% Chardonnay. Again, two grams like, like the Devote. And all of that Chardonnay coming from Grand Cru parcels. So yep. six Grand Cru parcels of six Chardonnay. Cru parcels. So really good pedigree for it. And the, and the Pinot Noir is coming from Ai, uh, Bouzy and Ambonet. So, you know, again, top notch. So mm. you're really getting a lot of that, that chalk and that mineral nature coming through, which you can see in the wine. Um, I was super impressed with looking at this after... Uh, a good year or so, actually, I hadn't seen it, and yeah. it's just superb. It's a good wine. You know, I think mm. that the house has got some vigour, it's got some energy. It's a young team. Alexander Corneau is, you know, a bit of an international man of mystery. He know? is. <laughs> and, he, and he sports the most phenomenal moustache. <laughs> he's great, you know, and he's got a great background, um, you know, working as an international wine dealer, international art dealer, I mm -hmm. should say. That was Freudian. Um, you know, he's worked in the law, he's worked in the army, and he really brings a sort of energy and a, a zaza zoo to the wine. The packaging's yeah. really cool. All the bottles are beautifully designed, and, and the wines are fresh. And yeah. I have to say, not an easy, extra brute's not an easy wine to make. And quite often we see it, and it's a bit austere, and yeah. it's a bit much, and that's fine if you're going to give a, an extra brute to a champagne connoisseur who gets it. But if you're going to serve this to a group of people, some being connoisseurs and some not, you know, you need something that's both... Um, lean but approachable and this wine has got both of those yeah and you, and you need you need that uh, there is a big trend at the moment towards this extra brut everything zero dosage you know let the wine speak for itself terroir etc but I, ultimately little dosage never hurt anyone mm -hmm. uh, especially if it's measured and done correctly and mm -hmm. that's what the whole purpose is about um, looking at extra bruts, looking at the ultra dry sort of um, uh, section and seeing where it goes. Totally, and yeah. I think if you're going to make an extra brut, start with ripe fruit, start with Grand Cru fruit, and give it a, give it some extra time in the cellar. Yeah. So this cuvee has been in the cellar for four years. They're completely different in their profiles. Mm. I loved this wine. Mm. You know, for me, it is lemon, it's lime, but you know, once that bright citrus note settles down, it's it's almond, it's cream, it's brioche, it's toasty, it's luscious. And yeah, I didn't get much of that toastiness in this one, I must say, but for me, it was a little bit more about that lovely grapefruit, um, uh, lemon zest, some hazelnut, some, some lovely sort of roasted aromas underneath, but ultimately super fresh. I love that chalky Zingy. play mm. uh, and really does all the things that you want it to and keeps delivering. It keeps, it keeps giving you. Uh, lots of flavors. So yeah, extra brute, great for summer. It's yeah. a really good category. Look for extra brutes that have done well, and not extra brute for for style's sake. And I think that the the, the winemaker needs to think about the wine with the intention of where it's going to end up first. So the the right grapes, the right aging, and the right um, and, presentation. And, and obviously of fruit. having that that vision as to where it will land in you know four or five years time. This had this has had about four years on Lee's, and whereas five the Devo's five. So you can see that that aging is brought out that nice texture in the wine, so. And what are you eating with it, Kiri? So with the, the Brimon Court, uh, when we had it at the house, and I really had such fond memories, they're mm. all about fun and, and having a great time. They, they served up these beautiful seared scallops with just a touch of yes. uh, salt and yes. olive oil. Yes, I know, so did probably mention it, before but it's yeah, just such a magic. great wine mm -hmm. either that or if you're feeling like some fresh oysters and there's mm. you know you, you want to get a nice yeah. tray of oysters this would be perfect totally. it's a classic you know but it really really works and that's the kind of wine to go for that's awesome. two amazing cuvées this month two yeah. producers who've really nailed their extra brute champagnes and we hope you enjoy both of these producers from the club this month excellent thank you thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again